Good morning and welcome to ODU Esports coverage of uh, League of Legends. Today we've got the ODU Monarchs uh, versing off against Hood College. Um, and as you can see, we already are underway with the with the draft. We are using Pro Draft today. Um, so that's why we have the graphic. As you can see, players not in the arena today. Of course, our spring break uh, just started. So a lot of these players have already um, left campus or traveling home or are already home at this point. So all players are playing remote. So far, if we take a look at this draft, interesting, we see pretty standard bands, I feel like, from ODU Monarchs. We've got a couple of bands thrown towards the mid lane here, uh, Vex and Orianna. Pretty safe mages, um, definitely blindable as well. I'm sure they've done a little bit of research on what Hood College likes to play as well, so most likely those are target bands for their mid laner. Um, and across the board, a couple of top lane bands, Gwen and Set, although Set is a bit of a flex. Haven't seen him played so much in uh, in in mid or jungle in a while, but definitely can be still flex top or support. And in terms of the picks that are coming out so far, definitely some interesting ones. We're gonna see a Draven first pick for the ODU Monarchs. They're gonna follow that up with a Thrush and a Nidalee. And I mean, you gotta feel good if you're ODU locking down this Nidalee early on. It's definitely a pick that they've. Uh, put to some great use in the past. And across the other side, we have a Caitlyn Nico Viego. So interesting. I'll be interested to see where this Nico goes. I mean, I expect it to be going mid, but it definitely could also potentially be a support pick. Um, I honestly think that it probably has some decent uh, combo potential with the Caitlyn. Uh, Although it could definitely, Nico probably not the greatest into a Draven lane is is what my I, I won't lie I have not seen a, a Caitlyn Nico versus a Draven Thresh uh, in my time, but I, I can't imagine with uh, with the knowledge that I have of bot lane that um, that it could be good. So I expect to see this Nico go mid. Of course, ODU has not drafted their mid yet. The second phase of bands, uh, second round of bands going very quickly. Trind, Rex, uh, sorry, Trind and uh, Renekton for ODU. Taking away some of those top laner picks and then across the board also Jax and Yone. And uh, I mean, we know Josh who has, who has been playing some more mid this semester definitely likes to go to that Yone, but the Jax, oh. Okay, we do not have Josh <laughs> today. It's going to be Colin. Um, but either way, I mean, we've actually seen some Yone played top as well, in, uh, even in professional play. So just a lot of top lane bans being thrown in the second round of bans. We're going to see the Ari picked up in response to the Galio mid, it looks like, from Hood College. And the final pick, Fiora. Wow. So, so ODU drafting... <laughs> In a, in a very confident way here. You expect them to be going all in on this early game. Uh, not a, Honestly, not a whole ton of scaling. <laughs> I mean, the Draven, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll mellow out quite nicely into the mid game. And, and Fiora, of course, will still be... Uh, she'll be a threat the entire game to the back line. But I think it will get to a point in the game where Caitlyn is quite strong. But, but I do expect... Uh, ODU to probably take this series pretty pretty handedly here and just just based on the uh, the differences that we have in terms of individual skill uh, ODU definitely uh, <laughs> a bit of a leg above Hood College but I mean we'll have to see I mean it really could go either way um, and I think this first game will definitely set sort of what we can expect for the entire series um, both teams with very different drafts and and I have to, I mean, not bias at all. I think I still have to favor ODUs here. Um, it just seems a lot more together. I feel like Hood College, I'm not sure exactly if they know what they're trying to do. I mean, I kind of understand they, they're looking for a bit of a, of a, you know, like a combo with the Nico, with the Galio over top and things like that. But that seems like it's going to be quite hard to execute, assuming that, you know, ODU does a decent job um, in terms of their positioning. I think that that's, you're, you're going to have a really hard time finding a multi-man like Nico ult 
or like a root into a Nico ult into a Galio ult. I mean, that seems very fringe. So just in terms of, you know, it, it'll really just come up to the execute, come down to the execution, I guess. But I expect ODU just in terms of, of, um, individual skill like mechanic wise you know you expect to find a lot of these guys to find early advantages in lane um and it's already you know a big advantage to to find uh even with a slower comp that scales you know much nicer late into the game but i mean with odu they're going all in on this early game lots of aggressive picks out for them so i expect to see them making plays all across the map i actually expect just because of the fact that they drafted draven to see a lot of action towards this bot lane. I mean, if you can get Draven to cash in on on those uh, adoration stacks, the game will get very quickly out of control to the point where Draven's just like frontlining. Like he won't even need someone to go in front of him. He'll just be running in there with his. Uh, <laughs> I expect probably with either a shield bow. He might even go Gale Force this game if they're if they get really far ahead, just to help close the gap. But I mean, you're just gonna see him sprinting in there and and just basically one tapping anyone that uh has a has a, a squishy health bar i mean maybe maybe champs like that are a little bit tankier might survive a little longer but you've got to be so so careful if you're this bot lane of a college and i believe i'm not 100 sure but i believe it, we did confirm that nico was going support for hood um unless it's the galio support but i would be very 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 surprised to see galio support i, I think it's just better to have the galio mid here although uh you know into the re it's a little bit you know i'm not as familiar with the matchup re just recently making her way back into competitive um but i i think i'd still rather have the galio in mid lane here versus the and it looks like uh where we're, i'm looking right now at the at the draft obviously they already did the pro draft um like the tournament draft style now they're just going through locking in the picks in the actual client um, I would expect this Galio to go mid. I would be very surprised to see it go bot as the support just because, I mean, into a Draven lane again, we already mentioned it, but <laughs> you're, you're just going to have such a tough time. And, and with that Thresh as well, I mean, the pressure, you know, a lot of people forget that, that Thresh, yeah, he's a melee champ. Yeah, he, you know, a lot of times he's picked for that safety that he provides, but, you know, you go E first on Thresh with the with the flay. You let it stack up a little bit before you before you auto attack. I mean, that can chunk you pretty hard. And in, in combination with this damage, that can definitely catch people off guard that the Draven has early on. It's really going to be up to uh, up to slamming and bubbles to to really be careful in the spot lane. So we are going to see the Nico go bot or sorry, go like support with her bot laner. Um, we're going to see the exhaust as well on the Nico, which I think is a good choice. It's going to have a lot of value here. Pretty much value on all three carries from ODU. <clears throat> and honestly, I mean, even, even on the Nidalee as well. Like I said, Nidalee, very, very strong uh, champion in the hands of ODU's jungler. So... Should be getting into game pretty shortly here. We are going to, of course, have to wait for a bit of a spectator delay, uh, which is about three minutes. So while we wait for that, I mean, let's look. Let's just look at all at these five, you know, both of these drafts holistically, right? So in terms of ease of execution, right? Because that's something that we like to talk about a lot when we're in terms of 5v5 competitive uh, league matches, you know, in your solo queue games, it's a little different. Sometimes you can win entire games just off of one person getting incredibly fed and, and just carrying the game out but in these you know competitive games it is important that you try and you know play as a team make sure that you're showing up for those team fights don't just afk split push the entire game especially in this current meta that we're in you know split pushing has become a little less uh prevalent you've seen a lot of those kinds of champs sort of phase out it's been more about these team fights and it, which is a little surprising, you know, even with the with Hullbreaker, um, you know, becoming an item, you, were, you would have expected that to be something that we saw more of, but it's just fairly underwhelming in terms of the stats that it provides and, and the situations and where it's relevant, so. I mean, we might see Fiora build at this game, but I honestly wouldn't even be surprised, especially if they get a very early lead into, <laughs> as ODU, that she probably won't even need it. You know, she'll probably build first two items before she even gets to Hullbreaker and... That'll be that. 
But, I mean, it is possible maybe if, uh, if Undead Falcons wants to try and just hard split push here on the Fiora that he builds it first. We'll have to see. I, I have not seen a ton of Fiora uh, recently either, so definitely excited to watch that pick unfold as well. In the top lane, I think the Mordekaiser matchup probably not the greatest. Um, you know, Fiora, a lot of mobility and can definitely do some work against this Mordekaiser if he's not careful. But... I think at least in terms of Hood College's composition, because we have just talked about ODUs now for a little bit, um, they do have a little bit more setup, I would say. So the thing about ODU's composition is that it is fairly reliant um, in terms of engage on, you know, Ari hitting a charm or Thresh hitting a hook, something like that. N nothing really, you know, there's no there's no real way for them to hard lock someone down on on, on these team fights. So if both teams do go even, get to the point where team fighting is so crucial around these later objectives, is, you know, second, third, fourth dragons, um, and of course Baron as well. I think that you know Hook College might actually have a better time looking, you know, sort of dancing around these objectives and looking to try and find some lockdown, you know, with a long range Nika root or, you know, even with a flank from the Gallia, if they're able to control that vision, so. And, and honestly, the Viego, I think the Viego uh, stun as well on his W. A lot of people sleep on that, man. You can, you know, Viego having that extra mobility and camouflage in his, uh, in his shroud, or not his shroud, but in his, uh, in his mist, <laughs> is definitely a, a great tool to sort of work your way around uh around the river without getting spotted assuming you sweep out any of the control wards that are locking it down and and you can really you know you find a, a, a if you if your galio is constantly watching your position as soon as you go in for that w stun if they you know it's going to hit galio presses r over the top of you that's a guaranteed lockdown um you know that can definitely be a great way to layer some cc and then you can even have the nico over top if you so desire so I think this composition for Hood's definitely a little bit easier to execute on. So I think it'll really just come down to them being able to survive into this mid and later game because uh, ODU is going to bring the pressure. And it looks like we are getting into game. So we will send it over. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Thirty seconds until minions spawn.
comes in there is almost enough to save him. Wow, that was in a that was a great two v three fight for ODU. They end up on the. time <laughs> you can see our uh
quick look up, up at, the, at that gold lead as well. It is looking pretty rough right now. Almost 7,000. two ultimates and I think this might just be another kill yeah for Falcons in the top Careful if you're this Galio and Mordekaiser again, not the greatest damage on these two champions.
Not sure if they have enough of a wave to knock it completely down, but they have four members strong here. So I think they will be able to get it. And they are just going to start immediately taking this inhib as well. And normally, you know, taking an inhib this early would probably not be the greatest, but you can actually see Falcons as well in bot lane. And this is going to be the fight. They're looking for it. It's a great parry, though, to dodge the ultimate. And <laughs> Falcons is just going to 1v1 Mordekaiser in his own death realm. That's three down now for Hood, and you have to imagine ODU is just going to close it out right here. Even a hem lancering tragedy forwards in towards the fountain. Just bubbles left up. Hook's not going to land, but it does not matter. This game is done and dusted. So that will be map one. Going to ODU. <laughs> you can see all the ODU members looking extremely excited there after that first uh, that first game victory. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't even think it was so much a draft diff in this uh, in this first one. I will say the Mordekaiser pick into the Fiora was a bit strange. I don't know, maybe um, that was just, that's just a champion that uh, Hood's uh, top laner is comfortable on, so maybe that's just something he wanted to take. But into a Fiora. You can see he was having quite the rough time there, and, and I expected to see either a ban thrown that way or, or just an adaptation um, going forward into this game, too, because something's got to change up. I actually thought there were some decent looks, though, from Hood. I mean, we saw a couple of plays made onto the Ari, I think, at one point, and then also onto Undead Falcons. Um, but... I mean, overall, it was just it was just pretty brutal. I mean, you have to you have to think too after that initial two v three that ODU opted into, right in the top lane that they won, they got three for one out of that those kills, three kills onto the Nidalee. At that point, the Nidalee was just able to basically control the jungle on the entire map. I mean, she was just solo walking in, um, onto this Viego and and basically one v one him, killing him over and over and over again to the point where. He became uh, just a vision, a, a vision bot, you know, <laughs> basically couldn't really do much in these fights at all. And yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be rough if you if you allow uh, tragedy to get these kinds of leads. I mean, really, with any of the with any of those champions, like we were saying that OD drafted, you, you let them get a lead on any of them and any any one of these players can carry the game. So. I think that Hood's going to really have to try and look, maybe draft. I mean, bot lane, although they did get behind, it felt like not too, too, too bad. And even in mid, right, the Galio into the Ari, I mean, we saw him die a few times towards the end. But apart from that very early kill um, that they gave up when they, they made the play towards top lane um, onto Undead Falcons, the 3v2 that they lost. I mean, other than that, the Galio was doing decent in mid. You know, the Caitlyn, Nico was doing all right in bot as well. Yeah, they were behind a little bit, but you expect those uh, those two lanes to get to drop a, a little bit of CS early on um, and just sort of wait to scale a little bit there for the team fight. So I think there are some decent things that, you know, that Hood, Hood had going for them in that game. It's just at the, at the end of the day, every, pretty much every single one of the lanes from ODU and especially in the jungle, you know, just massive, uh, massive gaps in terms of mechanical. I mean, like we were saying, tragedy right had like 96 cs before his bot laner had that and the the bot lane was free i mean there was hardly in those first 10 minutes there's hardly any fighting in bot lane you know a little, a little bit of trading here and there but no like all ins or anything and it was basically a free lane and somehow tragedy still you know even with even with almost perfect cs on the bot lane tragedy still almost surpassing him in the jungle and i mean that's just incredible there was one point where it was like a 50 or 60 CS diff between the junglers at like 10 minutes. So, I mean, that's just incredible, um, incredible to see out of him and really knows how to, to snowball with that lead. I mean, we see him, we've seen him do it in the past as well. Uh, he's no stranger to being able to take leads and run with it. So we are going to take a quick break while we, uh, Oh, actually I think we're getting straight into the pro draft possibly for game two. It looks like these two teams, just want to get straight into it. Maybe. Hold on. 
I'm receiving receiving intel from my production. All right, well, we're going to send it to a break while we wait for these two teams to get into the second uh, the second draft. I'm sure they will, you know, take their time in terms of that, just so they can grab water, use the bathroom real quick. Although that game, map one, was very short. When we return, game two. All right, and we are back. We are already getting into draft for game two. And apologies on our end. We had a bit of technical difficulties in that map one. So this actually might be the first time that you're hearing my lovely voice over the top of our gameplay. So um, already, Hood College, Fiora Band. We saw the that, that pick give them a lot of trouble in map one. Uh, so I'm not surprised at all to see it banned out here in the first phase. We're also going to see the Nidalee ban. This was the main one that I was surprised to see absent from the uh, list of bans from Hood. Um, you know, we've seen Tragedy put this pick to great use in previous weeks as well. So maybe just Hood not aware that this is uh, one of his best picks. So we're going to see that also taken off the board. So we are going to see a very different draft from uh, ODU. In this game and actually they're just going to go ahead and take the thresh as well so three of the five picks for odu already taken off the board um that they had in that first game we are going to see the same three bands though for odu so they are confident in what they banned for that first game we're gonna excuse me we're gonna see an early zin Zhao locked in here Uh, definitely a jungler that has been fairly meta now for uh, for quite a while, actually. Um, very often is picked up in this early rotation. And in response, oh boy, we're gonna see the Zeri Yumi out of ODU, and this is uh, this is one of those lanes that early on is very sleeper to watch and very quickly gets out of hand if uh, if Hood does not get an advantage and put this bot lane behind. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting some intel. This might be a Zeri top. Bit of a bit of a dark tech maybe coming out from ODU here. Although I do still expect to see it go bot with the Yumi. I mean, we've seen this pairing a number of times in professional play, and it just looks so disgustingly broken. I mean, it gets to the point where the Zeri is just zooming around the map so fast that, you know, it's almost impossible to lock her down and it, it, it gets a little bit out of hand. So, wow. And the third pick, okay, from ODU is going to be a Zed. So, and, and honestly, I, I think at this point, if you're ODU, you know, especially after how well that first game went, I don't even hate the pick, right? Like you're, you know, if you can find early advantages on the Zed and even if you can't, you know, you have this Zeri Yumi as your sort of like security uh, that you can fall back on if the game ends up, you know, getting out of hand early on. You know, this late game security that Zeri and Yumi bring is, you know, second to none. So, very quick second uh, second phase bans coming in. No hesitation at all from either of these two teams. We're going to see the Viego and Set taken away from Hood. And then also Trindamir and Echo for the Monarch. So... 
little surprised to see the echo i mean i guess it has a decent matchup into the zed but i don't expect that um the mid laner from hood probably plays a ton of echo but maybe he does you know maybe i don't know what i'm talking about they they might have info that i do not we're gonna see a nocturne locked in for the monarchs and you know i expect this to go jungle but honestly these both the, all these picks you know we've even seen some zed uh zed jungle in recent uh in recent patches so really these two picks still fairly flexible nocturne has been relegated to more of a jungle position ever since he received his nerfs for his laning um so he's not quite as adept at, at being picked mid lane or top lane anymore but at one point we did see him go into the lanes as a as a potential flex so hypothetically it is still open we're gonna see the malphite and wow and the nas is locked in here from hood college so they are all in on this jinx carry um wow uh, that's a little surprising to me uh because both of these picks malphite and nasus uh are not not <laughs> they're they're really playing to just you know i mean nasus i guess is just gonna try and split push and and malphite's just gonna try and help protect this jinx on the back line uh, we're gonna see a Silas come in as the final lock-in for ODU, and I like this a lot. I mean, the Malphite ult uh, can be stolen and and get quite a lot of value on the Silas, of course, with his enhanced AP ratios on his ultimate. I mean, Malphite, I'm sure everyone has at some point in time played into that solo queue, been you know queuing up in that solo queue game, and they see the the AP Malphite locked in on the other team. You know what that means? They press R, you explode. So, I don't expect this to be an AP Malphite this game. Uh, it was most likely be a tank, but of course, Silas will be able to steal that ult. I believe that's probably why that pick came in, specifically because they saw the Malphite ult. But definitely a few other decent ults to steal here as well. I mean, we're going to have the uh, Lulu ults as well uh, available for the Silas to steal. And... Uh, Zin Zowl, actually not bad on Silas either. Definitely can can create some space for him when he's diving in uh, onto uh, some of the more squishy members of Hood. So we are just going to see the picks locked in here for both teams. Of course, already in the pro draft, figuring out what they were going to pick. So we're just going to see the repeat as they lock into client. We have a fancy schmancy graphic for you guys as they do this but uh yeah I'm, I'm a little interested to see the thought process behind hoods draft this game because i did initially like the fact that they took away you know the the three picks that that were very you know instrumental in old dominion's first victory right the fior and the nidalee got out of hand very quickly so hood's like all right we're just gonna take both those away uh, and i don't mind that at all uh, the Thresh is a, is just an all-around great ban as well, but those that that four and five pick, uh, I'm a little surprised to see. I mean, I think it's at the end of the day, it's sort of just coming down to comfort for Hood, right? I expect that Slink is probably uh, fairly comfortable on this now, since so it's just a pick that he's played a lot of, so he knows how to pilot it, or he's confident that he can pilot it. Um, and interesting that we see Rainbow Madness for the second time this game on a more supportive pick in mid lane, right? We see him on the Malphite, and that could just be partially because it's, uh, you know, it's it's a lot safer into the <laughs> into the Malphite, uh, sorry, into the Zed for Old Dominion. But also, I think that you know we see a couple of early rotation bans thrown towards mid lane from Old Dominion, right? In the Vex and the Oriana. Maybe those are really the only two mages he feels comfortable piloting. So he's, you know, <laughs> deciding for himself that he'd rather just play a more supportive pick for his team uh, since his, since he's being targeted a little bit in that first, uh, you know, that first round of bans. So honestly, more exciting stuff here, though, for both teams. Uh, I've not seen... A nocturne in a little bit especially on in a competitive setting and, and zed i mean is always fun to watch 
and even Zeri, right? I mean, yeah, we were mentioning this early Zeri lane is going to be pretty boring, but if it gets to the point where she uh, she has a couple items under her belt, she gets out of control very quickly. The good news is Jinx, in terms of AD carries that you want to have into Zeri, Jinx is one of the better ones. Um, if she's able to build, you know, rapid fire cannon, get to that point, that will allow her to, you know, at least sort of, ha you know, she'll outrange the Zeri a little bit. So um, we'll hopefully still be able to hit even with how quick the Zeri moves around. So yeah, two very, very different drafts again from both these teams. And I mean, in terms of just the draft, like if we're looking just purely at the draft, I am, my, I mean, my name is purely after all, it's kind of my job. Uh, I think I'd still have to favor Old Dominions, though. I mean, the Zed is definitely, you know, a pick that can be punished if you're Hood. Especially, you know, I think the Malphite will do just fine into it. Um, of course, with that passive armor that he gets, we'll definitely keep him pretty safe against this mid-jungle uh, duo from Old Dominion if he plays smart. But I think the problem is, you know, Nas is going to be very weak early on. And I think I expect Old, Old Dominion just attack towards his top lane again like they did in the previous one. Um, you know, Silas, you know, not, not exactly the strongest, like, er, you know, early lane, you know, usually he waits, uh, until, you know, he has, uh, you know, at least an item under his belt before he really starts going for these all ins. Uh, but Nasus is, is much weaker than Silas in this early laning phase. So I wouldn't even be surprised to see them go for a play early on, like they did in the previous game. Yeah, we are just waiting now for the spectator delay to kick in. Um, I will say that if Hood's able to survive a little bit longer in this game, I mean, this Jinx can be become incredibly powerful and definitely carry team fights if they're able to keep her alive. And I mean, what a better support to, to have with the Jinx to keep her alive than the Lulu. So much peel as well with the Zin and the uh, Malphite. So in terms of like team fighting options, I mean, Hood has them as well as, you know, the split push from the Nasus. If you've ever played against the Nasus, you know that he get, it gets to the point where he basically, he autos a turret and it goes from 100 to zero very quickly. But, you know, we'll need to see Slink play a lot safer this game because if he allows the Silas to get fed, I mean, Silas, if he's able to get fed is, you know, obviously any champion that's able to get fed and pretty much any of these champs actually for Old Dominion, uh, you know, all, all four of them, again, plenty of capability to carry, uh, but especially Silas, right? I mean, with the, with how, even with the, with the nerfs to his W, uh, you know, increasing the cooldown a little bit, um, I mean, he's still, <laughs> he's still just so impossible. It's so hard to get onto him and, and, and kill him before he's able to, to heal back up with the Kingslayer, so. I think Hood uh, is gonna be again in for a bit of a rough time here. I actually, I, I wouldn't even be surprised. Obviously we can see Falcons um, and Klo, right, in their respective lanes, but I wouldn't even be su surprised to see a swap here, right? We were, we were mentioning that the, the Silas wants to steal the Malphite ult. Um, I mean, he can of course steal the Nasus one as well, just not as, quite as, as valuable. Um, as this uh, Malphite ult. So I, I wouldn't even be surprised to see a lane swap here for ODU. You know, send the Zed as well into the more favorable matchup up in top against this Nasus, uh, who does not have the passive armor like the Malphite has. And it could uh, it could get out of hand even quicker, <laughs> even quicker than we were, we were talking about. So we are gonna be getting into game. As we load in, gonna take a look at these runes and starting items for these, for both of these teams. Looks like, again, pretty standard stuff. Uh, 
can see Bubbles opting for the Guardian over the Airy. I think that's fine. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a bit of a personal preference here, and, and in this lane, the Guardian will do just fine. Until spawn. Do see a comet from Rainbow in the mid lane, and, and that's gonna help him, you know, keep up with some of this trade some of these trades from the Zed. Who especially level two and level three could look for an all in here. He he has brought the ignite, so even against the Malphite, you have got to be careful. And uh, this might be a bit of a hot take, but I actually think this is a game that you can look to build, uh, you know, an early um, Chemtech Putrefire here onto Bubbles, maybe even before her Mythic, just because of the amount of healing that's going to be coming out from ODU, right? You've got the Yumi, you've got the Silas Kingslayer, and depending, we'll have to see what the Nocturne and the Zed build, but of course Zed does like to build Eclipse quite often. We might see him on a Prowlers, though, if he wants to just maximize the raw DPS that he can output. Um, but could still be quite a bit of healing here for ODU. Gonna see an early trade in the top lane. Nasus does have Fleet Footwork, so that will help him sustain a little bit. And actually, you can already see Rainbow Mattis going to win out in these early trades. The Zed does have to be a little bit careful early on. I'd like to see him, you know, wait a little bit before he really starts looking to apply the pressure here. Um, because, of course, Rainbow Madness with the Corrupting Pot and the Biscuits as well is going to should be fairly safe while he has those charges. You got you to gotta play this lane very patiently. We can already see Silas going in for an early level... Has the level two over the Nasus. Is going to cause Nasus to fall back here to his turret. But he should be just fine. We'll have the uh, the healing from the Doran shield. But actually, okay, he ticks two. I was going to say, that almost got a little sketchy. And like we were mentioning... Nasus going to have a bit of a rough time here in this lane. He really just needs to try and do his best to, to pick up as much XP and CS as possible. Really can't look to fight at all. And actually, as I say that, he walks right into the Q from Silas. So I, I think he could actually just get dove here. We can see the Zen pathing top right now onto the Silas. Uh, okay, it's a good dodge on the E from Slink, but he's still going to go down to the flat, uh, with the, from the flash out of Silas. I think that, uh, Undead Falcons really did not want to have to flash there if he didn't need to, but does end up having to flash, so goes flash for flash, kill for kill in the top lane. Zin Zhao is able to get it back. We are going to see uh, Tragedy just force Uncle back off of his blue as well, but we'll have to retreat here because the Nasus has the early, uh, or has the closer path, I think, to assist if need be. And actually, we were talking about how this early lane for the Zeri Yumi is not the strongest, but forcing out the heal and bot lane on the Jinx and the Lulu. So they're actually already losing these early trades. You can see... Zed not having the, the greatest time, though. The Ignite going to come in, though, from the Zed. That damage, I think, catching Madness a little bit off guard. Oh, and staying under this tower is so dangerous into a Zed. I believe he's out of sustain as well. No more Biscuits or Corrupting Pot charges. He has to remember that this Zed, as soon as the W cooldown comes up, can chunk him for quite a bit without being directly under the tower. It's going to be the Guardian proc in bot. ODU with the early bot lead. Is, and again, we're seeing... Actually, Madness doing a decent job winning his lane early on. Like we were saying, Zed not having the greatest time into this Malphite.
Uh, yeah. The, the main thing I will say is that this jungle matchup, a lot more manageable here for Uncle in this game. You know, he had quite a miserable time in the previous one against the Nidalee. But this time, got an er himself an early kill. Is behind a little bit of CS, but not much. And actually, we're going to see the all-in here from Falcons. He dings six, steals the mouth vital, and that's just going to be a solo kill in the top lane. It looks like, you know, the Malphite not realizing that Silas could, uh, <laughs> could just do that. He was feeling pretty confident after how well he was doing against the Zed, but the, you know, they, he swaps towards top because Nasus can, you know, can't even farm. And I fear that, you know, against the Zed, he's not going to have much better of a time. It's just one of those things about Nasus is uh, he's definitely more of a late game split pusher. Is not going to really be able to do much early at all. And should see a play going towards Kegamos. Actually, no, we're going to have a dive and bubbles flashing just in time. That was nearly just a solo kill there from the Zed. If he had the ignite up, that was definitely a kill. So the bot lane from Hood, they are going to retreat here, but that's going to give over a couple of plates now to ODU. And we could definitely see the Zeri Yumi lane get out of hand pretty quickly. Okay, we're going to see Madness back in mid against the Zed. I think maybe that was just a temporary swap to catch the wave or maybe just to push it for the Nasus who had to back. But unfortunately for the Nasus, he's going to land. And what a trade from the Silas as well. Gets a little bit of damage back. He's going to try and sustain back up again. Has the Doran shield. Has uh, looked like he bought one health potion maybe, but we're going to see the all in from the Silas. That damage is pretty... Pretty crazy. The Zin's here to help. He has Ding Six, but the Silas is still very strong. He's gonna look for the kill. It's gonna force the flash from Zin, but now with that Nasus all expiring on the Silas, I don't think he wants to try and dive them. He is gonna the Zed is here though. He's gonna look for the kill under the Zin and he's gonna find it. That is one of those things that's so miserable about playing Zen into Zed is, of course, the ultimate from Zed allowing you to get right on top of him, which is where his ultimate is uh, pretty useless, is in that melee range. We're going to see two ults coming out here from the bot lane of ODU. Oh, but those traps just coming in uh, just a second too late there from Slammin, and that's going to cost Bubbles her life. So a 2v2 kill in the bot lane. Bright side for ODU is, or sorry, for uh, Hood is that at least the kill went onto the Yumi. So it's it's not going to accelerate the Zeri as quickly, although she did still get some of that assist gold. Really, the only the only lane that's going somewhat even here is this mid lane, and <laughs> the tank Malphite is not going to be. The champ to carry for Hood College. I mean, this bot lane has not had too much pressure outside of that one gank from Zed. We roamed down from mid. So we really need to see Slam and do his best to try and farm up here and get strong on this Jinx. see some vision being contested here. Silas maybe looking for the all-in. He's going to force the ult and the flash out of Nasus, and I think he's got to be content with that. He can just wait now for this Nasus ult to expire, but actually he's just going to go in. Wow. Hits the E2. I'm not sure he wants this fight. The W comes in. He is going to have to flash out, though. Oh! Oh, my God. And wow, Falcon's almost over uh, overstepping there. I think he forgot about the corrupting pot tick. Okay, do he does dodge, and his W's back up, so we're gonna get some some great healing from that. But 
Yeah, that's that's definitely a misplay in that top lane, getting way over aggressive, and taking their advantage away a little bit. We're gonna see a play on the bot side of the map. You can see in our picture in picture. Is gonna result in a kill onto the Jinx, and she's gonna be zoned off of a lot of farm here in the spot lane turret. Not to mention Zeri gonna be getting some of these some of this plate gold as well. And actually, they might just take the first turret here. Uh, they shouldn't be able to quite get it on this wave, but in the next wave, they definitely will be able to. And I actually. Okay, so looks like Hood was just able to pick up the Rift Herald as well, but I believe it was traded for a Dragon for ODU. Currently, the Dragon hiding under our uh, our overlay a little bit there. We're going to see an all-in towards this top side. 1v2 for Falcons, but again, this Kingslayer healing coming in. And he, Nasus does not win this fight. You can see him trying to run away here. But Falcons is going to chase. And even with the Nasus in his ultimate, you can see it's not enough. I mean, it is enough to keep him alive for now. But Falcons is just going to go for it. And I think he's going to die. No, he doesn't. The Triumph comes in, keeps him alive. And okay, the Malphite surely has enough. Falcon's going to look for it, and actually it's going to force Madness to flash away. Again, this Kingslayer healing causing so many problems for Hood College. And that's just another dive under the turret for Falcons. He's even going to live. And this is what we saw happen in the previous game as well. You know, you, you, you let your top laner get fed on a, on a champ like Fiora or Silas, like he is now. And he's just going to run away with this game. Really limit testing as well on this pick. Just diving multiple cam multiple champs under turret. A lot of confidence. Even going for the Ludens Tempest as well on the Silas. So just looking to try and burst down some of these champs. And we're going to see a play made onto the Zin Zhao. We see the flash, but that's not going to be enough to get the Zin Zhao out alive. Even in the ultimate. The Yumi ult over the top was just beautiful. Rooting up three champions there and giving ODU the extra time they need to get that damage across. The Jinx at least lives, so she will can be able to continue to farm. Oh, she gets hit by the slow, and I think she's dead. Okay, she's not quite dead. We are going to see this Malphite now go on to the Zeri, but Tragedy is nearby. Two assists, so they are not going to be able to continue to chase there. And only 30 seconds left on these turret plates. But I'm sure if we had a if we had a, a graph, we would see just how much gold ODU has gotten from these plates. Already knocking down this tier one bot and I believe the tier one top as well. So so much gold. Malphite? Okay, just looking to get a Q on to Zed. And yeah, even this Malphite now starting to fall behind on the Zed. Does have a kill, but down about 15 CS here. Actually, we're going to see Zed look for an all-in. And it's a nice ult from the Malphite that is going to keep him alive. We even saw a flash and ignite expended from the Zed of ODU. We're going to see an all-in on the top side of the map. Falcons again, stacking up that Conqueror onto the Nasus. Nasus forced to pop his ultimate. It is going to keep him alive, but again, we see Falcons look for the dive under the turn. He is just going to be able to get the kill. I mean, this is the thing, right? Is like There is no champion in the game currently that can match his Silas inside right now. You can see... Three champions now collapsing on him. Oh, but this Jinx is being left out to dry. Bubble's being attacked right now by Tragedy. And they're all just getting so split up here. I think Falcon's just going to walk out. He is getting a bit low on mana, so you do have to be a bit careful in that regard. 
He is going to look for the E chains onto, uh, onto Uncle. Ends up hitting a minion instead. They are going to start to siege this tier 2 and top. Hood just desperately trying to clear the wave at this point. We are going to see Silas go forward here. Stealing the Lulu, or sorry, stealing the Nasus assault. It's going to force a flash there from Slammin'. And I'm surprised that Slink decided to go in. They might find the kill. Oh, the rocket's blocked, though. So Kegamos is going to get out alive, and that Yumi healing again. She's going to go right back up to almost full. Red buff as well, going to provide some of that healing. As ODU knocks down this inner turret in top lane. They might even continue onto the inhib as well. They have to be a little bit careful, though. Falcons, HP, and mana quite low, so he's going to have to recall. TP not quite back up yet to rejoin this fight. So I think ODU is just going to back away here, which I think is a smart call. Going to steal away these jungle camps. We're going to see an all-in, actually. On to Zed. And actually, he chose to get aggressive there. And I think that's just going to be a kill. Yeah, the rest of ODU there to follow up that last bit of damage that they needed. So Malphite overstepping a little bit. And, you know, again, we got to look at the gold lead here. 14k in the lead for ODU. I mean, it's it's pretty unwinnable at this point, barring any major mistakes out of them. You know, this Zeri's not really even online yet. Just the Essence Reaver right now, almost towards her mythic. Interesting to see, actually, she's going for the crit build. Not a build that we've seen too much on Zeri, although I do believe that Riot was talking about changing it so that she couldn't just do the Trinity Force and the Titanic Hydra build anymore because that was a little ridiculous with how much HP she had as well as damage and, uh, and you know, how far she could hit from as well. Yeah, and it's just looking pretty rough here. Really just a Bramble Vest on Nasus to cut some of this healing. Not too much anywhere else for any of these other champions and... That's just going to be a kill onto the Zen as well. He really cannot ever walk into his jungle now. Even just to get vision. Falcons again just taking a 2v1 in this bottom lane. And he's going to just go under tower onto this Nasus. He, he does have to flash out from the turret range. Oh, he's going to E into the... Wait, I'm not sure if he landed that E2. He did not. Super Mega Death Rocket going to come out from Jinx. It's not quite enough damage. Again, this Jinx is so far behind. Just got to her Kraken Slayer. Falcon's going to seal away this red as well. Does have to be a little bit careful. Getting a little bit low on health and mana there. Important to note that the King Slayer only heals off of champion hits. It does not work on monsters. But I think he'll be just fine. Even going to clear that blue side as well. And yeah, it's just, it's looking pretty rough from Hood. I, I don't even really know what their win condition is at this point. I mean, they can look for a, a Miracle Steel maybe onto a Baron if ODU decides to start it up, but I don't even think they need to. I was actually, I didn't even mention this. We do see a tank build on the Nocturne, which is quite interesting. We're going to see the all-in. Zed going in onto Slammin'. I think he's going to die there. Yep, he will to the ultimate tick. Tragedy currently taking up the tower. He's taking quite a bit of damage, but he should be just fine here. And Undead Falcons getting on to the back line as well. He just deals so much damage at this point in the game. We're gonna be we're gonna see Shelly dropped here. We might even get a dancing Rift Herald for this game too. Because uh that's gonna be all she wrote. As we see, ODU knock down this Nexus. And we are gonna get get the dancing Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> What a statement of a game for this ODU team. And, you know, I, I think that Hood did a decent job. You know, you, I don't think you can get too upset um, if you were them in this position. Like we were saying, you know, ODU's team averaging high diamond, low master, whereas, you know, this Hood College team, I believe, has averaged like low gold, high silver even. So, you know, obviously like pretty big difference in terms of the individual skill of these players, but they definitely had some good looks, especially in that game one. 
I think game two, uh, the draft was just a bit hard to play. Obviously, they were kind of all in on that jinx win condition, and she, you know she did not really. She didn't. She didn't get you know too far behind in terms of like she didn't die a ton in lane, but in terms of CS, just dropping dropping behind pretty early on and and just not being able to provide the impact. I mean, ODU ended the game again at like 20 minutes. So the Jinx only sitting at one item. She's not going to be online just yet. She doesn't really start to get powerful until two or three items. So ODU again, just piloting that, that top jungle duo very well. Actually, Undead Falcons didn't even really need a ton of help from his Nocturne that game. I mean, he was basically just doing it all on his own. How many times did we see him 1v2, 1v3, even going under turrets sometimes for some of these kills? Uh, making some plays that I would never even think of, of doing, but that's just one of those things with Silas, man. I mean, the healing that comes out from that Kingslayer, a little ridiculous, um, and with such a low cooldown as well. He just... I mean, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? So that is going to be the Swift 2-0 for ODU. Uh, and again, like I said, don't have a ton of players here on site. And I, I don't think uh, don't think we're going to have a player interview either way. Um, not much to talk about in either of those games. You know, pretty quick 2-0s. Um, but yeah, they're looking good so far uh, in this Mace Conference. And I mean, we'll, we'll hope to see them continue on in future weeks. Uh, I'm not sure if they will have a game in this coming week. Obviously, uh, like we were mentioning on the previous broadcast, spring break coming up for us. So a lot of teams are trying to reschedule some of their games to once we get back. Uh, but our broadcast, while it is done for now, we will be back later with uh, another Rainbow Six game. This time tonight, we are uh, competing in the Face It Collegiate Championship, uh, which is quite a prestigious tournament in the Rainbow Six Collegiate scene. Uh if you missed out uh, on last night's stream, ODU was able to get the 2-1 victory over Liberty University in a very, very close series. Uh, so if you missed that one, I highly recommend you check it out on our Twitch channel. Um, it was quite a banger of a match. And if you're free, feel free to tune in later as well. Uh, they will be facing off versus Waterloo College again in that Face It Collegiate Championship. Should be uh, another banger of a game. So other than that, uh, I'm Jeremy Purely Iber. And thank you again for tuning in for our League of Legends coverage. Actually, make sure you drop us a follow on Twitch if you haven't yet already. Turn on that notification bell and also head over to Twitter. Follow us on ODU underscore esports. We appreciate all the support you guys show us. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and we will be back later with Rainbow Six Action. Have a nice rest of your day.
All right, and we're back. And uh, you might be wondering, uh, didn't you just sign off and say that we won't be back till later for Rainbow? Well, actually, surprise, surprise, it turns out that this is a best of five, not a best of three. Um, I will take equal responsibility with my production crew because I should have been aware of that. So we are back. We've got one more, or well, hopefully we have more than one more game. But with how ODU, the fashion they've been closing out these games, I expect it to just be a pretty swift third game as well for the 3-0. But we're back. We got more League of Legends action. So we apologize once again for that uh, for that mistake. We will continue to cast some League of Legends. We got we got more more gameplay for you guys. I mean, you, you know, it's not it's not exactly a downside, right? But we are currently just waiting for all the players to get back into the lobby before we head over to the draft. So just wanted to let you guys know. Still got another game. So don't go anywhere. When we when we return, we'll be in the draft for game three. All right, and we are back. And actually, we were while we were getting everyone back into the lobby, they were in the pro draft. So we are just going to go now into the in-client draft. So we won't see the exact order that everything was picked up, but we are going to still see the picks here. So it looks like Fiora Band again coming out from Hood. I expect to see the same three bands from Old Dominion that have been working so far for them. Uh, Graphic does say 1-0, but currently Old Dominion up two games to zero on Hood. And, uh, and they use the same three initial uh, initial bands both of those games, so I expect to see again Vex, Karma, and Oriana taking off the board for Old Dominion. 
This time we see the Twitch taken away by Hood instead of the Thresh, um, which I'm a little surprised to see. I mean, I know Kegamos does is a bit of a Twitch enjoyer, but we did not see him bring it out in the previous game, going towards the Zeri instead. And he looked quite good on that, and we are going to see, oh my goodness, Old Dominion. No, they're not messing around at all. They want to they wanna quickly end this game three. Going to see a Rengar in Irelia coming out. And actually, maybe these teams did not do... I'm not 100% sure. Maybe they did not do... No, I think they did still do the pro draft. So maybe just locking in those two picks in reverse order there. I expect the Irelia, of course, to go top and the Rengar to go jungle. Can't see, can't say that I've seen uh, a ton of Aurelia jungle. Okay, but Old Dominion maybe just planning on swapping it around because we do see a Callista locked in. Now we have seen Solo Lane Callista, um, both mid and top, uh, in different regions around the world. It is a bit of the sh uh, of the shy special over in the LPL, but have not seen a ton of it recently. It was it was a bit of a, a bit of a dark tech last year, but. I actually wonder how the matchup is into Delisandra or the Mundo. I imagine it's probably not too, too bad. We are going to see the Gwen locked in, though, here for Old Dominion. That definitely seals this Callista's fate, most definitely going into the spot lane. Um, we're going to see a Chin Yumi bot for Hood. So, again, just very... I mean, I like that the Madness is on a mage this game, but again, still very supportive champions. You know, the damage profile for Hood, they, they really don't have a whole lot. Uh, this Jin's not going to do a bunch until, you know, pretty late in this game. And, and same with same with Asandra. She's, you know, a lot more of an enabler than a carry. So This sort of just has it's kind of been the theme of Hood. You know, they do draft fairly scaling every game, but it's, uh, you know, they, you got to get to that point in the game. You know, you have to be able to survive the early game in order to get to a point where you can actually deal damage back to Old Dominion. And again, Old Dominion was just, just the most aggressive comp. And hey, I mean, you know, why draft scaling for Old Dominion if you just win lane, win game, right? So it looks like I, I expect this to be a mid lane Aurelia. Now that we now that the Gwen came in, we can see the teleport ignite on that Gwen as well. Um, but I mean, hypothetically, it could be Aurelia top, could be Gwen mid. You know, either of these champs, you know, they're flexible in that regard. Even seeing a bit of Gwen jungle as well. But I do expect this to be a Rengar jungle. I'd be pretty surprised to see a lane Rengar. But I also am not an expert on. <laughs> on the matchups for Rengar, so maybe Rengar has a particularly good matchup into one of these lanes and they wanna wanna flex the Gwen jungle. We will have to see. We actually have already seen Tragedy play. I believe he played at least one game of Gwen Jungle earlier on in the season. Um, and he looked pretty good on it, so definitely the flex potential is there. just waiting for the spectator delay if you're just tuning in now welcome uh odu is currently two games up on hood college in this maec matchup uh we are about to get underway with game three you're looking at the drafts i don't think this is you know obviously the order of the champs that we have for odu uh most likely that callista will be going bot and the Rengar will be going jungle, of course, with the smite. So. But I guess it is possible. Maybe uh, maybe ODU going for a bit. Something I didn't consider. Maybe they're all deciding to play different lanes here. That is something that we, we failed to consider. <laughs> maybe call them a bit of an audible. Get out of their uh, get out of their comfort zone a little bit. Maybe we do have tragedy playing lane and undead falcons playing jungle and uh <laughs> Gagamos playing either top or mid we will have to see we will have to see i will say it's going to be pretty important for this gwen to uh to get a pretty substantial lead especially so because the damage profile for odu she is the only ap threat 
on their team. And with uh, with uh, quite a few tanky members on the side of Hood College, you can definitely invest in some early armor, which will make it a little bit more difficult for Old, Old Dominion. A lot of healing as well for the side of Hood College, so that'll definitely be something Old Dominion will want to consider to purchase. Some anti-healing. The entire, pretty much every single champion, um, except for Jin. You know, Jin doesn't build a ton of lifesteal, doesn't really take it in his runes either, just because of the nature of how his auto attacking works, but he's gonna have that Yumi on him quite a bit. I'm, I'm assuming he'll take fleet as well, so we'll definitely still have a bit of a uh, bit of healing there, but Lissandra has the healing from her ultimate. And of course, Trundle and Mundo with tons of passive healing. It's honestly just worth it just because of the Yumi, you know, once you get to the later game. But I don't expect this game to go late at all. Old Dominion, first two games, closed them out in just under 20 minutes or, or, or just over 20 minutes. So, yeah, it actually it looks like, okay. So... I think we are going to see a lane swap here from these players on Old Dominion getting out of their comfort zone a little bit. We uh, we do see all of the positions except for Ahem, who's going to stick that Blitzcrank in support. Everyone else going to be moving to a lane that they do not normally play here. To so we're going to see Undead Falcons in the jungle, Tragedy in mid, Kegamos in top, and... Uh, as he glowed down in the bot lane with a hem. So this this should be interesting. I mean, the thing is, you know, most of these players, like we we're talking about, for Old Dominion, high diamond, low masters. So I'm sure they are no strangers to, uh, you know, once you've been playing the game for so long, you, you do get a feel for how other lanes tend to operate. Um, you know, the difference between mid and top is, is not not that big of a deal. Um, there are a few, you know, matchups, matchup things that you need to consider. And, and then, of course, you know, keeping in mind la uh, wa uh, wave management is a little bit different as well. But we do see quite a lot of times mid and top players uh, switch in between, especially on certain teams. So we'll have to see how it goes. Tragedy in mid, though be a bit of a change of pace considering he is normally in the jungle so i'll have to see how he does and actually lethal tempo on this rengar will be quite interesting um cannot say that i've seen a ton of rengar recently but lethal tempo very powerful rune after the rework on it so i'll have to see if he's able to put good use to this rune Everything else, though, pretty standard from both teams. Actually going to see a Dorn's Blade on the Gwen. And I, I do actually like that quite a bit, especially since a lot of this early trading power. Oh, that's a bit awkward from Ahem. Tries to flash in front of the minions for a hook, but ends up falling just short. And uh, just hooks one of, the, one of those casters. <laughs> so that's going to be Flash gone now for the Blitz. Of course, he does have... Hex Flash, so it's not the the biggest loss. He can still look for a quick Hex Flash onto a, onto a hook. And I do like that we you know we've seen very different drafts across all three of these games you know definitely keeps it interesting to watch we're actually gonna see a bit of an aggressive trade onto madness nice play from tragedy to get an aggressive trade we're gonna see a hex flash ahem gonna get the knock up and should be able to follow up on the hook the barrier's gonna come in for the Jin, but he stops with the w rue and i i think he might have been fine if he just keeps kiting there, he might have been dead either way with the Ren from the Callista, but as soon as he presses that W to attempt to get the root off, definitely seals his fate there. Do you see uh, Kagamos in this top lane? 
Losing the trade a little bit to the Mundo. Of course, the sustain from Mundo, quite annoying, especially early on here. He actually does a surprising amount of damage as well early on in this lane. We're going to see the stun land. This might... Okay. The E is going to come out from Madness. That will get him out alive, but he has to be so, so careful dropping quite low there. Oh, and I don't think Slink is aware that this Rengar snuck into this top lane. He's going to flash, but the Ignite is ticking. And that is going to be a kill. Another great max range hook onto this Jin. He's just going to be dead again. Already this Callista with two kills in the bot lane. Uh, tragedy going a little deep there. And that is quite unfortunate. Madness surviving on a sliver of HP. <laughs> You can see them laughing about, laughed it off a little bit. Not too concerned about that one. Oh, we might see a bit of an all in here. On to Kagamos in the top lane. He does have a level advantage right now, I believe. We're gonna see the flash forced. Flash for flash here on this trundle. Rengar is going to continue to go. Takes a couple turret shots there and drops very low, but I think he's going to be able to get out okay. Ahem covering his retreat a little bit there. But already this early game, still favoring ODU here. You can see they're already up about 2,000 gold and... And a lot of those advantages are, are just from CS differences as well. If so you look across the board, right? And especially in mid lane, this Aurelia up 20 CS already on Madness. I am looking for a hook. The root's going to land, though, from Jin, so that should keep him relatively safe. Trundle coming in for a gank. That flash from the Callista, though, and I think they need to back up after they get that flash. I think ODU can definitely turn it here. Oh, that hook is going to whiff, though, from a hem. I think if that lands, that's definitely a kill onto the trundle. Surprised they continued to walk forward there after they got the flash from Callista. Oh, and Tragedy's down here on the Aureli. He is already very strong. Level 6. They might look for this dive. The ult's going to hit 2. A hem is tanking. And actually, it goes kind of bad for ODU. It is a one for one, and they do get the TP out from Madness, so that is something. But currently, a hem being chased down, and I think he might. I think he's just going to try and execute here. Okay, he will get the execution off. So at least no one from the side of Hood picking up that gold. Might have been a bit of experience there for Madness if he was in range. So this early game, although, uh, again, we see a, about a 2K gold lead still, or 2.5K gold lead here for ODU, at least it's being weathered a bit better by Hood College. And I think in terms of drafts as well, this is probably the best one they've had so far in this series. Although I will say that the Jin is not something I was really expecting, and, and definitely this bot lane having a rough time early on here. The way I look at Jin for this bat, uh, when you pick him in bot, it's more of just like a safe lane. It's almost like uh, in a similar way that Lissandra sort of is a neutralizing lane, right? It's not that she wins against Irelia, it's that she does, it's, you know, it's harder to lose because she has a lot of the, a lot of that CC built into her kit to prevent Irelia from all inning on her, which we saw is uh, kept her alive just by a sliver of health there under that tower earlier. Um, you know, in a similar way, Jin just has a lot of safety in this bot lane early. He's not very strong, but with the Yumi, you would have liked to see him try and just focus on farming. Obviously, you can't do much about the dive, but a couple of unnecessary deaths from him so far, and it looks like they might go for it again. Ahem is looking. He's going to use the ultimate to get on to slamming. And Ahem tanking, he is just going to get out of range just in time, but I think Quill's going to go down on the back of that. So they do go two for one. And I believe actually Jin at least able to get that kill. 
Gonna get some nice plate gold here as well onto the Rengar. It's already becoming quite strong. But off of that play, I mean, ODU extending their lead to three and a half thousand gold. Rift Herald is going to be started up here by the Trundle of Hood College. The stun's going to land onto Madness, but Tragedy cannot chase that under the turret. Saw what happened earlier. He went a little bit too deep on the Aurelia. And even though he's already died twice here and roamed all the way to bot at least once, still up about 5 CS or even a little more, or maybe more like 10 CS on this uh, Lissandra after he collects this wave. So again, just the individual, you know, the individual players on ODU finding these advantages in lane. Definitely causing some problems. All oh, that hook just narrowly w missing from a ham. Oh, very nice sidestep on the stun from Madness. Again, Lissandra not doing really a ton of damage early on here, but it's going to be very safe to just farm in this lane. She did get an early kill and assist as well, so. This mid jungle definitely looking like the bright spot here in this game. But we're going to see an all in in the jungle. Undead Falcon is going to get very low, and actually, he's going to drop to the trundle. Tragedy gets in there on the backside of that fight and is able to get one back onto the Lissandra. So it's a one for one in the top side jungle. I believe, though, that they were able to secure that Rift Herald, uh, Hood College was. So again, similar trades that we've seen in the previous two games as well. ODU opting for the first dragon. We're going to see the same play here onto this bot lane. The Callista ult into the knockup, into the knockup again from the <laughs> from the Blitzcrank into the hook. Just so much CC. And it's really hard to, to do anything about it. We're gonna see an all-in on the top lane. Kegamos only almost getting the better of Sling. Does force out the uh, force out the old from him to stay alive. And actually taking that turret shot off the back with the sustain from Slink, it is gonna be about even at the end of the day. It is really hard though now as the Mundo, now that uh this Gwen has her leeching leer. It's gonna provide some of that sustain helped to match some of the healing that Mundo has in this top side. And I know that if Rob was here right now, he'd be talking about why the Mundo, asking why the Mundo does not have Bramble Vest at this point. <laughs> Would have definitely helped a lot to cut some of those Gwen healing. See, she's going to complete her Mythic as well now, so... Pretty strong in this top lane. All three laners, you can see at 100 CS. And in this bot lane, slamming. One and five and down about 50 CS. He's having a rough time here. And that's really going to hurt them. Because like we were saying, the, the damage profile here from the side of or, uh, from the side of Hood College. Actually, as I say that, we're going to see a play made onto Uncle. He thought maybe he had caught the Blitzcrank out of position there. But no, the rest of ODU to back him up. Oh my gosh, that Rengar damage is just insane. And of course, with how far behind as well this Jin is, that Ignite is going to get the final couple of ticks of damage. Oh, Hex Flash in mid lane. Looks like they're maybe looking for a play onto the Lissandra. Actually, the hook's going to land into the knockup. And I think that that ultimate's just going to delay the kill. She should still go down. Even a Hem knows exactly how deep he can go without being under tower there. And he's just been all over the place. Already nine out of these 12 kills that Hem has been a part of. Will soon fall. And I expect to see ODU just sort of 
push in these lanes. Maybe look to get one last reset in here before this dragon spawns. And I think Kegamos probably doesn't even really need to join them for this fight. You can see how, with how far bot lane is pushed in as well. They already took that tier one, pushing them all the way back to the tier two. This should be a pretty free dragon, I feel like, for ODU. I think it would be foolish for uh, for Hood to try and fight it at this point in the game. Wow, even the Lissandra going for Zhonya's first item. So we were talking about how she doesn't have any damage. Well, she really doesn't have any damage now. It's going to delay her mythic. And uh, we're going to see three members here going on to tragedy in the bot lane. And actually, that exhaust going to aid them quite a bit in getting that kill. Uh, the root onto Chloe is going to pop the it is going to pop the shield bow, but they are still able to pick up that kill on the madness, even with the Zanyas. Going to see a teleport back to top from Kagamos. And maybe they're just going to let Rengar solo this dragon. That, uh, that exhaust was definitely important onto Tragedy. I think he might, with the, uh, with the Bork, I believe he had it at that point, might have been able to, to win that, that 1v3, honestly, if he had not gotten exhausted there. Actually, I'm thinking it might have been the Ignite invested on him as well. So not only was he exhausted, but that Ignite cutting some of the healing that everyone knows Aurelia healing is quite annoying on that champion. So we're going to see the second dragon here picked up for ODU. And it looks like Hood wants to try and cross map here on the second Rift Herald. And with the resets coming from ODU, should be fairly free. It looks like Tragedy maybe wants to walk up here and contest. I don't think he's aware of this positioning from Madness, though. And he does have to be careful. Madness, again, not very strong in terms of damage right now, but a lot of CC that she can provide. We saw Tragedy not expecting the damage that Hood had at that point in the game earlier. Would be unfortunate to make the same mistake. We're going to see an all-in onto Kegamos in this top side. He's looking to try and turn onto Mundo, but unfortunately that R2 just not quite hitting the mark. The rest of ODU here, though. And Ahem's just going to charge right in. Actually, the slow there. I think he's going to go down. He's going to flash, and he's going to die anyways. Flash coming in just a bit too late. They are able to at least get the kill onto the Mundo. That slow, though, from the Mundo, allowing him to get the trade. Onto a hem. So just a one for one in this top lane. And, and again, I mean, we see ODU slowly but surely extending this gold lead. But at this point in the, in the previous two games, it looked like ODU was about ready to end the game. So at least Hood doing a little bit of a better job here, stemming off some of this pressure. I'm just not sure it's going to be enough at the end of the day. The Callista is 9-1-2 and two right now. Already two completed items and even has the uh, the knife as well in her bat. I believe it's like a uh, rage something. It's the component that builds into the Gwinsu's that converts her crit damage into flat on hit damage. And wow, we're seeing Falcons just get ult and immediately flash in. I think he's going to die for it maybe though. Okay, he's they're going to pop the Jin ultimate. That first shot will not get the kill, but you can see the collapse coming in here from the side. Slink really wants to get this kill on Undead Falcons, and the team fight's gonna break out here. It's madness. And actually, it looks so far, it looks pretty good for the side of Hood College. They are gonna win it, actually. In a four for two trade. And again, we can already start to see some of these champions for Hood College just getting so beefy. It's really hard to get, chew through these health bars on the Mundo and the Trundle, especially, of course, like we were mentioning, with their passive healing, with the Yumi on top, able to out-sustain that fight. So even though they were able to take down the Lissandra and the Jin, it's too little too late. And I mean, again, just ODU. <laughs> you can see them not too happy after that fight. <laughs> but again, just ODU, they, they're very confident 
diving <laughs> diving these champions under turrets and they get punished for it. Or, well, they weren't diving. They were sieging the turret. My apologies. We're going to see Undead Falcons, though, not perturbed by that last fight. Going to go in onto Slink. He will be able to limp away, though. Actually, Falcon's dropping quite low as well. Should be able to heal up off some of these camps, though. And ODU looking for a play. Well, maybe just looking to steal away this red buff. That far side alteration, I'm not sure if it quite got a glimpse of them on the red buff, but I think Trundle's aware. You can see a little wary to walk into his bot side jungle. That second one is going to spot out the majority of ODU sitting down here in the bot jungle. So even though, you know, it was a great team fight win from Hood, I mean, ODU's still up 7,000 gold here. Still in a, you know, still pushing these lanes in, sieging some of these tier twos. Kagamos though, looks like they want to go in. Nice two man ult from Undead, or sorry, from Tragedy. He is going to go down after finding, after the first kills picked up onto the Jin, And it looks like another, this fight is being won, but actually, I think this Kalissa is going to be able to turn it around. She sends a hem in, but it might be to his death. She is kiting, though. Slow's going to come in, though, from the Mundo. Oh, but he, he is able to slip past that pillar. And these spears are stacking up. He's going to get the first. Is he able to kite this out? He's dropping so low. And the Mundo's just able to sustain through it with this Yumi. Again, just so much healing. And that's going to be an 1,000 gold shutdown for the Mundo. <laughs> So actually, Hood College again take a winning team fight, and they're going to be able to get a dragon off the back of this, so that's going to slow down the dragon stacking for ODU. It's now just a 5,000 gold lead difference between these two teams. And definitely some opportunities here for them to make something happen, although I think Slink's going to go down here. He will. And with the Yumi on his back, that's going to be two swift kills going the way of Undead Falcons on this Rengar. And uh, I, I think the main problem here for Hood College is going to be as soon as ODU starts to build some of this anti-healing, we're going to see a great, uh, <laughs> a great drop in effectiveness of this composition. Again, like we were mentioning, so much passive healing on these two squads. We're going to see the Shirelias pop to him looking maybe for a bit of an engage. They are just going to clear out some vision and back up. And they're actually, I think they're looking to starve this Baron. They did get that pick onto Slink and onto uh, Bubbles. So maybe they just feel confident that they can burn through it. And you can see the damage. They're just shredding through this Baron. That's going to be a 21-minute Baron for ODU, completely uncontested. And see, this is the problem, right? Even though Hood is, is able to fight back in some of these team fights, okay, they are going to collapse onto Kegamos. He should most certainly be dead here, but actually he immutes the root from Jin. I don't think the slow, though, from his R is going to be enough to get him out of there. The Trundle Q just too strong, allowing him to stick on to Kegamos there, so he's unable to get out. So they do trade one for the Baron. It's not the end of the world, although I don't think he needed to be there splitting that far up. So Hood, one by one pick by one pick. Start to try and climb their way back into, the, into this game. Unfortunately, like we were mentioning... So much control of this map right now for ODU. You know, Slink trying his best to push out this top wave. He's going to try and collapse on these three members from ODU, but... At this point... I think Hood is just trying to desperately defend this middle turret. We can see Kegamos just now respawning. He's going to get back to work on this bottom lane. Missed hook onto Slink, but either way, with that uh, with that passive up, would would not have done anything either way. Oh, we're gonna see the engage. The R stun is gonna go in onto Klo, and he's the main target that's that Hood needs to find. But they're unable to get onto him. Mundo on the back line though, he is finally able to shut him down. But Kegamos under the tower is gonna find the first, and this Yumi is not long for this world. That is going to be a clean team fight ace for ODU, and that's just going to be the end of the game as well. 
So, I mean, with that, right, it looked close until it didn't. That final fight, they were, they finally were able to kill the Callista, but that's basically all they got. You know, it took too much time to shut her down. She was able to free hit for too long, and that's going to be their demise. Madness is up. Gunna and Flash, because he knows the game is over. Oh, actually, the respawn's coming in, though. And they're going to try and turn this. Tragedy should be able to get out. The slow, though, coming in. Oh, but Slink has to land some of these. And the Shirelli is just now coming off the cooldown. The slow lands on the Kegamos. Slink's going to continue to try and chase this. He might be able to find two here. But again, the sustain from Kegamos is pretty crazy. He's winning out right now onto Slink. He finds the kill. And he gets onto the Jin. He shuts him down as well. So it's just going to be... <laughs> A triple kill, I think, for the Gwen. I think the Callista was able to chime in on one of those kills, but now this is most definitely the end of the game here. It looked like maybe there was an opportunity there for, with the overextension from ODU, but well played by Kegamos. These two remaining players from Hood are going to attempt to stall. They are able to at least get the Gwen, but ODU... Not interested in this game being stalled out any longer by Hood, and they are just going to cleanly finish out that game three. And that's going to be now the series victory 3 0 for ODU. Again, we apologize. We thought that it was a best of three earlier on. But they are going to just take that game three victory. Again, very swiftly, a little bit slower pace than the previous two games. Uh, I believe sub 20 minutes or just after 20 minutes on uh, those first two. And that one, I think, it was ending right about 24 minutes. So, uh, again, <laughs> incredibly quick games here from ODU, which is what we expected, uh, again, <laughs> from uh, from these two teams. But, you know, Hood looked uh, Hood did not lay down at all. You know, they definitely were battling back, especially in that third game. We saw some great opportunities from them. A couple of one team fights as well. Just it was a little too, uh, you know, too little too late at that point with uh, the advantages that ODU was able to get in lane. So, again, thank you for tuning in for uh, this League of Le uh, Legends coverage that we've had today uh, of ODU versus Hood College in the Mid-Atlantic Esports Conference. Uh, that's all we have in terms of League today, but if you missed earlier, we do have um, some more Rainbow Six tonight. Uh, we had a great game yesterday between uh, ODU R6 and Liberty University. Uh, it was quite a banger of a game going all the way to three maps into the final round of overtime. ODU was able to clinch that victory 2-1. They're playing against tonight versus Waterloo uh, Esports and should be a banger of a game. So if you're interested in that, make sure you tune in. I believe that'll be around 8, 8.30. So make sure you tune in around there to find that. Um, and drop us a follow on Twitch if you haven't yet already. Uh, turn on that notification bell as well. It'll let you guys know whenever we go live for any of our games uh, coverage. And follow us on Twitter as well, at ODU underscore esports. Uh, but other than that, I've been Jeremy Purely Iber. Thank you again for tuning in, and hopefully I will see you guys later for the Rainbow Six cast. Have a great rest of your day.